The elections are over. What are the elections about anyway? Well, most people would say it's about the candidate electing somebody that's going to get in there and you know get the job done, getting the things that you want done, the things that your party wants done. Now, no one in this country ever says, well, once we elect this person, what is it that they're allowed to do once they're elected? They take this job. They say they're a congressman or they're, they're a senator. What is their job? What is it that they do? Is it their job to promote legally by passing bills that circumvent the Constitution, that uh, violate certain inalienable rights that are protected, as an example, under the Bill of Rights? Is that their job? Well, it's really clear. After someone is elected, and I don't care whether they're a Democrat, Republican, or a Socialist, or a Communist, once that person is elected, before they can take the job, before they can go into office, they have to take an oath or affirmation. And basically, what the oath and affirmation is, is a contract. It's a contract where you say that once I take this job, that these are going to be my main priorities. As an example, say I'm elected to the Senate. Before I can go in there and start my job, I have to take the oath. I have to verbally agree to the contract, the law, the Constitution of the United States, the Supreme Law. I have to verbally agree that I'm going to uphold and defend that Constitution from enemies foreign and domestic. I'm going to uphold and defend it against any enemy that would try to cross that border illegally. I'm going to defend it from that. And then I'm also going to defend it from those enemies that have, they're in, the traitors from within, those domestic enemies, those people who would want to subvert the Constitution to promote some sort of foreign and alien ideology like socialism or democratic socialism or whatever ism they come up with. You see, that contract, that very first contract that the person that has been elected has to take that oath, that sets the rules for everything. What it's saying is that your political party, your political persuasion, if it in any ways infringes on the United States Constitution, then it can't come in. The moment you take that oath and say, I solemnly swear to uphold and defend the Constitution, if you're a socialist, you can't bring socialism in. You just said you're going to uphold and defend the Constitution. You can't bring democracy in because you said you're going to uphold and defend the Constitution. And what does the Constitution say under Article 4, Section 4? That the United States of America shall guarantee to each state of the Union a Republican form of government. And it's, then it goes on to say, it also will protect each state from invasion. Okay? So it's very clear. When a person says, I solemnly swear to uphold and defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that's clearly a contract. A contract that they have sworn an oath or affirmation to, placing themselves under the penalties of perjury, that they will faithfully execute the laws of the land. Okay, clearly they cannot bring their political ideals into the job. They can't do that. Now, we've seen with Project Veritas, we've seen that not only have, do we have people in government who have no intentions of honoring that contract or honoring that oath. There's socialists, there's Democrat socialists that are running... Uh, Project Veritas has shown that they're, they've infil infiltrated the entire uh, country as far as our government's concerned. And remember, there was a fellow by the name of 
Joe McCarthy, Joseph McCarthy, back there in the 50s, who um, warned us about the communist infiltration. Because you got to remember, communists, communism is built on a lie. Now, Karl Marx made it very clear. You can read the Communist Manifesto for yourself. He said the communism abolishes all truth, all religion, and all morality. And all I can say is just look around. Look around what you see here. Have, have we abolished all truth? Religions, what's that anymore? And morals, there aren't any. So communism is based upon a lie. And that's why Joe McCarthy was so concerned about it, because he knew that the communists would lie. They would take an oath to uphold and defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic, when they are the domestic enemy. They'll take that oath and they'll go in and they'll evade that oath. And like I said, Project Veritas has proven beyond a reasonable doubt that that's going on today. So I know I've talked on the subject of the oath many times before. In fact, I even mentioned it in my last video. But I'm, I'm so concerned about this because this is where we can nip the uh, problem as far as the corruption in government. We can nip it in the bud. We can nip it in the bud prior to anyone even being elected to office. You can stop them before they, go, they are even elected. You can say these poor people, they do not qualify to even run for the office because their political platform clearly demonstrates that they have no intention whatsoever of upholding and defending the Constitution. Especially if they're out there saying, we're going to pass gun control legislation. As soon as I get in, I'm going to get a bill before Congress. That person doesn't qualify. They can't qualify to take the oath. They can't qualify to best represent us under the law. See, this isn't a democracy. We just vote people in and they pass a bill. And if the bill violates the Constitution and gets passed, that we're all bound to it? We're not bound to any unconstitutional law. Not at all. If a person takes the oath and decides that they're going to you know, present a bill that infringes on your right to keep and bear arms even in the most minute way. That person has committed perjury. And they need to be called for it and they need to be arrested. Criminal perjury. They, they clearly told you that they had no intentions. Democrats have no intentions of holding and defending the Constitution. They support democracy. And, of course, every vileism that there's, that's out there is all corralled within the Democratic Party. So there's nobody in the Democratic Party that can qualify for any office in the United States because they can't take the oath. They, they're not going to uphold and defend our republic, and they're not going to uphold and defend our republic from enemies foreign and domestic. Even if they raise their hand, they've committed perjury. I believe that they've committed treason because of the, the magnitude of the responsibility of best representing us under the Constitution is being violated, I believe that's treason. And these people need to be arrested. And they, we, I mean, need to be arrested and we give them due process of law, something that they would never give to you or I. But that's why I'm, I'm making this uh, short video today is because I want you to think about that for a minute. I want you to think about how can somebody like Bernie Sanders, an open socialist, how can he be elected? How can he qualify to represent us under the Constitution when his political platform clearly and notoriously states that he's going to go in there and he's going to promote a foreign and alien ideology like socialism as opposed to honoring his oath of upholding and defending the Constitution. Bernie Sanders is a domestic enemy, plain and simple. And because the American people have no idea how the system works, they don't know that these people don't even meet the qualifications to when elected, accept that office because they cannot take the oath. 
We need to challenge them before. We need to expose them as the traitors they are, that they cannot. Their job, we're not a democracy. Like I said, you don't, you're not, you don't vote somebody in there and they just grow the party line. Once they take that oath, we're back to upholding and defending the Constitution. That's the only thing they can do. Anything that they do beyond that is a violation of the oath. I really want to turn this country around. For 45 years, I've fought my own court battles. I've uh, taught people how to use the court, how to do legal research, write uh, motions and briefs, uh, you know, make and meet objections, and how to, co you know, conduct themselves in court so that they, they can, you know, fight for their constitutionally protected rights when violated by some local ordinance or some local, uh, uh, I want to say, law enforcement officer. They're good officers and bad officers. I've met both. But uh, it, it, all in all, they're, they're, the officers are going to go ahead and follow the law regardless of it's, if it's constitutional or not. So if you have a right and they violate it, you need to call them on it. And you, in the moment you go along with an unconstitutional law and you continue to do it, then you've, you've acquiesced to their jurisdiction, their uh, pretended jurisdiction in this case, because the Constitution doesn't give them any power, any jurisdiction to, uh, to enforce laws that violate people's constitutionally protected rights. Well, anyway, when you're taking a look at your candidate, next time they're, they're out there, listen to what they're saying. And if what they're saying violates the Constitution before they're elected, what makes you think that they're going to honor that oath once they take it? And once they violate that oath, then you need to say something. Anyway, I am the Ghetto Man, and I want to thank you for watching. If you're politically correct, then you're legally wrong. And if you're not part of the solution, then you are the problem. Thank you for watching.